I want you to picture your perfect beach, the ideal beach destination for a vacation. Go ahead, take a moment. It's a pretty safe bet that you're picturing a beach with sunny skies and clear water, maybe some palm trees. But it's almost certainly the case that you are picturing clean white sand. You may simply be forgetting all about the beaches that have black sand, like Maui's Black Sand Beach and Wayanapanapa State Park, and the beautiful pink sand beaches in the Bahamas and the Philippines, as well as the beaches with green sand and red sand. Suffice it to say that not all sand is the same. If you put sand, or any other sediment for that matter, under the microscope, you are likely to find an astounding number of different minerals on display. Not to mention also pieces of shells and bones too. But where does sediment come from? Are there different types of sediment? And what can the grains and sediment tell us about its origin? Generally speaking, there are four types of marine sediments. Lithogenous sediment, biogenous sediment, hydrogenous sediment, and cosmogenous sediment. However, strictly speaking, it is very rare to find pure sediment. You are almost always going to find sediment of one type mixed with sediment of one or more of the others. Put it another way, you are far more likely to find peanut butter cups than chocolate or peanut butter. Sediment, like these other things, just have a tendency to get mixed together. Lithogenous sediment consists of particles derived from pre-existing rock. The name, lithogenous, is derived from the classic Greek word lithos, meaning stone, and an array of other words meaning genesis or origin. Lithogenous sediment is generated from stone. It is also known as terrigenous sediment, a term that comes from the Latin word terra, meaning earth. Lithogenous sediment comes from the earth. Think back to the rock cycle. The rock cycle is our model of how materials are recycled among the rocks on our planet, how our planet recycles and reuses its minerals despite ever-changing landscapes on the surface. All three types of rock, igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic, are turned into sediment over time by natural processes called weathering and erosion. Weathering is the breakdown of rocks into smaller pieces, and erosion entails the transport of rock fragments away from their place of origin. Fragments move downhill and may be carried by wind, stream or rivers to other locations like beaches where you ultimately find sediment. Biogenous sediment has an entirely different origin. Biogenous sediment consists of shells and other hard parts of once living organisms. The name biogenous is derived from the classic Greek word bios meaning life. Biogenous sediment is generated from life. Odds are you've always viewed seashells and sand as entirely different things. But when you think about it, aren't seashells just large grains of sediment on the beach? If you aren't sure, take a very good look at the sand during your next trip. Even on a very nice sandy beach, you are bound to find that many of the grains in the sand aren't pieces of rock. Instead, many of them are small fragments of shells that have accumulated over time. Most of the grains probably started as big shells. But as those shells were exposed to natural processes, like the waves and other elements on the beach, they broke down. They broke down to smaller and smaller pieces until all that was left is the fine shell debris. Of course, 
not all shells start out big. Many microorganisms on our planet produce shells, which are too tiny to see with the naked eye. You need a microscope to see these shells. Some of the most important of these microorganisms are called diatoms and radiolarians. They produce shells made out of silica, the same compound found in the mineral quartz. Coccolithophorans and foraminiferans also produce tiny shells. However, in these cases, the shells typically consist of calcium carbonate minerals, like calcite. If you look at sediment in the ocean today, you will find that coccolithophorans, foraminiferans, diatoms, and radiolarians contribute to biogenous sediment in a variety of places. Moving on, the term hydrogenous sediment comes from the classic Greek word hydro, meaning water. Hydrogenous sediment comes from water. But how exactly? Well, hydrogenous sediment is also sometimes referred to as chemical sediment. It forms from chemical reactions that cause materials dissolved in water to precipitate. Precipitation is a chemical change from an aqueous state to a solid state. The chemical reaction is usually triggered by an environmental change, such as an increase in temperature, one that might trigger the reaction. Alternatively, it may be triggered by an increase in the availability or concentrations of the dissolved materials. As you can see, here are the precipitation reactions involved in the formation of calcite and halite. All minerals form through such precipitation reactions. Evaporite minerals are a textbook example of hydrogenous sediment. These minerals include halite, or rock salt, along with minerals called anhydrite and gypsum. Not surprisingly, given their name, evaporite minerals commonly form as a result of evaporation, evaporation of seawater, or evaporation of other salty fluids. We'll focus on halite. Seawater, of course, is naturally salty. It contains high concentrations of sodium and chlorine, along with ions of a variety of other elements. This is true of many lakes and ponds on our planet too, like the Great Salt Lake in Utah. When these salty waters are in environments with high rates of evaporation, such as salt flats like this one, Water is lost to the atmosphere. As this happens, the concentrations of sodium and chlorine increase until they bond to each other and halite is precipitated from the solution. You can observe the same reaction by dissolving table salt in water and boiling it until all the water has evaporated away in the form of steam. Although you will start as a clear solution of salt water, you will ultimately find salt grains at the bottom of your container. Finally, we move on to cosmogenous sediment. Like the others, the term cosmogenous sediment comes from a classic Greek word, cosmos, meaning universe. Cosmogenous sediment consists of microscopic spherules and macroscopic debris brought to earth by meteors and meteorites. Cosmogenous sediment originates elsewhere in our universe. Obviously, if you look at the world as a whole, cosmogenous sediment must be rare, right? It's really hard to imagine that there are any cosmogenous sediment beaches out there. You have to assume cosmogenous sediment is rare. In this case, it is a safe assumption. Cosmogenous sediment is very rare, but when you do find it, it can be an incredibly important discovery. Some of the most important cosmogenous sediment consists of tektites. Tektites are microscopic spherules composed of silicate rock. They are formed from small molten pieces ejected from asteroid impacts. Usually where there is one there are many, and scientists have used tektites to look for evidence of 
ancient asteroid impacts, ones that could have been responsible for the extinctions of life on Earth. Suffice it to say that tektites offer clues to some of the most important events in Earth history, events that have helped to shape the world as it is today. So, now that you know about the four different types of sediment, how do you actually tell them apart? On the one hand, it is very easy to distinguish a tektite from a shell fragment. But how do you relate the properties of a sediment sample back to its origin? How can you tell where sediment comes from? The answer is you can identify each type of sediment and where it comes from by looking at its mineral composition and texture. As you may recall, the earth consists of many layers, like an onion. Humans live on the outermost peel of the onion, on a thin layer called the crust. The most common minerals in the crust are quartz and feldspar minerals. These compounds, not surprisingly, tend to be the most common minerals in sediment. That said, a sediment sample is likely to contain an array of other minerals too. Minerals like calcite and various clays and micas. These minerals, along with their concentrations, can help you to determine where the sediment comes from. Is it lithogenous, biogenous, hydrogenous, or cosmogenous? Each type of sediment has its own unique mineral fingerprint. Most shells, for example, consist of either calcite or aragonite. Meaning, if your sediment primarily consists of calcium carbonate, it is most likely a biogenous sediment. You can also determine the origin of sediment by examining its texture. When geologists say texture, they are usually referring to the shapes and sizes of grains in a sediment or rock sample. Some sediment consists of large grains. Other sediment consists of small grains. Some sediment consists of grains which are all the same size, what we call a well-sorted sediment. Other sediment samples are poorly sorted. They consist of grains of many different sizes. And of course, some sediment samples consist of grains which are very angular, while others consist of grains which are more rounded and spheroidal in shape. Your challenge moving forward is to develop your observational skills so that if you see some sediment or a sedimentary rock, you can begin to recognize the minerals and texture en route to ultimately identifying the origin of the sediment. Until then, let's return to the beginning. Why do some beaches have white sand while others have black, pink, green, or red sand? Well, white sand beaches primarily consist of lithogenous sediment made of quartz. In this light, it's not surprising white sand beaches are so common or why they are the first to come to your mind. After all, quartz is one of the most common minerals on the Earth's surface. Pink sand beaches get their color from biogenous sediment made of tiny pieces of shells. Shells of corals, clams, and foraminiferans. It is life that gives these beaches their distinctive color. How about green beaches? Well, they are particularly rare. They get their color from lithogenous sediment produced from the weathering and erosion of nearby igneous rocks rocks containing high concentrations of a green mineral called olivine. Of course, don't make any assumptions. Black sand beaches and red sand beaches also consist of lithogenous sediment derived from igneous rocks. At the end of the day, it's the minerals in these rocks that really determine the colors of the nearby beaches. So next time you take a trip to the beach, Remember to stop once in a while and look around. You might just be surprised by the ways that geologic processes have shaped the environment around you.